All right. We're going to start off with this coverage in regards to bricks. Now, if you're new, you're not maybe up to date on the whole thing of bricks, and that's okay. Here at Maximus Crypto, we don't just mention specifically cryptocurrencies. We try to see what's going on also in the real world and see how that plays out in regards to supply and demand, especially for these digital assets that are obviously cryptocurrencies and so on. So let's give you something somewhat new, okay? And let's, if you know anything, talk about Morgan Stanley for a bit. Yes, I am Mr. Stanley, but I'm not related to Morgan Stanley. So let's just get that out of the way. So I'm going to come into uh, full screen this. Let's go ahead and share this. Shout out to Elon Musk, Mike Cornwell, who originally shared this. And then, of course, this comes from Smoke. It says, Morgan Stanley, one of the most important financial uh, consultancies. I can't pronounce it right. I think it's a typo. Or maybe I'm not pronouncing it right. Excuse me. Um, in the world has predicted that cryptocurrencies will disrupt, yes, disrupt the global financial system in 2024. Now, for me personally, if we were talking about crypto related ones tied to the ISO, you have to pay attention to the full mandate November 2025. But you know, things are getting really bullish in 2024. You've seen the market go to 2.5 trillion plus. But look at this statement the consultancy pointed out that bitcoin's market cap already rivals gdp of major economies such as switzerland for example and that both stable coins and the rise of central bank digital currency cbdc's are completely reshaping the global finance i would say that's pretty accurate getting more into this let's share this this is also from smoke maybe that's not how you pronounce it but i think it is he's got this quote as well institutions are here but the biggest players have yet to arrive now this part i will take a pause this pounds home in my opinion what we have been talking about as far as a community and what exactly is that that is iso 222 the whole thing in the united states right um you know showing up late to the party november 2025 the full mandate we know it's going to come Will it get delayed? I don't know. Things have been delayed, but this is a full mandate and there's a deadline. So is that what they're referring to? Could be. But check this out. Let's uh, also full screen this. This is worth pointing out. And look what it says. Basically speaking, the game changing moment of what, guys? Institutions. Yes, institutions showing interest in crypto is here. But the largest funds have yet to fully deploy their capital, explains the pace of things they're on the way, however. I will come back on this because I want to check something. When you see statements about the largest funds have yet to fully deploy their capital, this is not me picking on any of you guys. This is not me trying to be like, oh, I know more than the next guy. No, I'm just a regular guy who shares research. I'm humble. But you know how many times I've seen on Crypto X? People post XRP is doing nothing. XLM is doing nothing. Um, a little bit of H bar. Oh, I sold all this for that. What is the big problem about this narrative? It tells you who has researched this and who doesn't understand the bigger picture of things. How many times on Crypto X, Reddit, other particular platforms, heck, even on Facebook, you see people who say it's not moving. It's not doing anything and so on. Again, back to this whole thing on the outline. And it just goes to show that what? That statement from Smoke. And we'll full screen it one more time just in case you connected. Largest funds have yet to fully deploy their capital. Institution showing interest in crypto is here. Showing interest and fully getting on board are two different things. You know, people talk about the flip of the switch moment. It hasn't happened yet. Do you see a utility run going on in crypto right now? I don't see a utility run going on. I saw a guy, believe it or not, recently, and he's welcome to post. I didn't like, you know, oh, your difference of opinion. I'm going to ban this guy. I'm not like that. But he made a post and he was laughing. And he was just like, oh, God, Max, you know, to the words of talking about QNT, uh, Pepe. Shiba Inu, 
All these other ones, meme tokens, are way higher in market cap than Q&T. True. Very true. But do we see the whole thing of Q&T and some of these other ones being fully utilized? No, not yet. Why? Again, back to the statement you see on the screen. So coming back into this, right, institution showing interest is a big difference from a mandate. It's a big uh, difference when it comes to larger funds that have yet to fully deploy just that, guys. They're capital, right? They are on the way, however, right? Absolutely. Here's some reported highlights for this. Let's blow it up bigger just in case you're who? You're who? That's right. Boomer F and Sooner with his dog, Monica, sitting on the couch. Here's the report highlight. What the, does it say? It says, to give an overview of the topics and analysis covered in this report, below is a summary of the key insights to follow. And let's follow it. 58% of institutional investors responded that they were invested in digital assets globally. That's big. Very big. 66% of those who express interest in multi-digital asset products or single multi-digital asset products would want an institutional multi-digital asset investment portfolio to be actively managed. On top of that, most investors are split on whether environmental concerns affect their decision to invest in digital assets, with 48% citing, quote, no impact and 40%, quote, less likely to invest. There's a little bit more I want to get into this because um, it talks about custodian. You don't see this highlighted, but this is definitely worth pointing out, especially, you know, Larry Fink and BlackRock. Investors reveal security and safety, ease of use, regulatory status as the most important characteristics when choosing a digital asset custodian. Aha. Let's pause on that for a moment. You don't see quant tagged on us. None of these are really tagged. But when you think about like what quant offers, QNT, what Gilbert Verdian has literally been talking about for a while. You know, the internet of trust, the internet of value. And most importantly, to be able to have everything working seamlessly, future proof, back to that statement. Almost four in 10 investors indicated they, they uh, participate in DeFi with the highest levels of participation in Europe. Yeah, in Europe, they still get it. The United States doesn't. Big difference in opinion. Almost six in 10 institutions express a willingness to invest in a tokenized version of real world assets, NFTs in line from one year ago. That part's big. We'll get into the NFT side of things on the BSV segment tonight. How about this, guys? Half of institutional investors surveyed are now familiar with Bitcoin mining up from last year and driven by increases in Europe and the United States. And 42% of institutional investors surveyed find the implementation of CBDCs appealing, whether we're on board for it or not, right? Up two points from last year, driven by interest expressed from European respondents, CBDCs continue to have the highest appeal among Asian and European investors surveyed. Now this part, institutions are here. Again, guys, here, but the biggest players have yet to arrive, right? Do we see, um, you know, the tokenization of institutions and their assets yet? No, we get hints of it. We see a little bit of start of it, but it's not on chain. And if it was on chain, do you really think for a moment that, you know, we would even be at 2.5 plus trillion? We'd be way higher than that, my friends. We would be, in my opinion, like maybe close to 10 trillion. How do we know that? Well, look at BlackRock, look at Vanguard, look at your state streets, add it up. Even if it wasn't them fully putting it on chain, do it at 10% and then come back to me with that number after you researched it. That's no dog on anybody that doesn't do research, but it's just a reality. The bottom part is important. The study findings additionally reveal that pensions, endowments, Foundations have both the lowest adoption and the highest AUM among respondents, indicating that adoption is concentrated to the lower AUM institutional investors and the larger institutions haven't yet made allocations, haven't yet made allocations and making allocations currently are two totally different things. Are they not? I would totally say that they are different. So getting more into this. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
I'm going to jump to this next part. And we're going to pull this up. So this is also good info. It's a citation that was originally from Smoke. All right. Some people have requested the actual link. You can go verify this yourself if you choose to do so at euronews.com slash business slash 2024. It is from the um, February 2026 report, right? So roughly about a week or two ago. What's mentioned here says that we will see the end in 2024 of the no coiner crypto skeptics. This is good. I'm going to blow this up as well. So on this one, let's, uh, you know, zoom in just a tad bit more. It says there's a narrative. What is that narrative? Well, there's lots of narratives in crypto, is there not? But the narrative of those who refuse to imagine a future in which cryptocurrencies will be integral to the financial system now seems forced, self-serving, and even fanatical, according to Silvina Mushini. Right. So nothing has been more damaging to the adoption of cryptocurrencies than the no coiners. Right. Think about that. Who are some of the no coiners as we speak? Your Elizabeth Warrens, you know, Jamie Diamond claims to be, but let's get real about that. He holds it. He's just a big liar. And, you know, some of the other ones are quote unquote anti crypto, right? So when we get more into this, check this out. This is good stuff as well. It's a good outline, right? It's going to make all sense here in a bit, especially on the BRICS part. Deniers who refuse to buy into the system and uh, prophesize that they that the industry is doomed to failure. Fortunately, these skeptics appear to be a dying breed and the doubters are becoming less doubtful. Who is one of the dying breeds? I hate to say it like Warren Buffett. Um, you know, what's his name? His buddy, Charlie. You know who I'm talking about. Two years ago, an article published in Vice Magazine outlined how a no-coiner was a derogatory term in the crypto world used to describe anyone who derides the ecosystem by saying things like, quote, it's a bubble about to burst. It's not a you know real money or is a wily anarchical, or anarchic, excuse me, archaic, I can't pronounce anything tonight, <laughs> unregulated form of Wild West financial capitalism. Something that will fail sooner or later. Okay. So think about that for a second. Fail sooner or later. They're part of the old way of looking at things. While anti coiners may have been more appropriate moniker, what is clear is that despite of all the skepticism, it didn't impact adoption trends. Yes. Can we pause on that for a second? Even as we speak, we still haven't seen a real true utility run. That hasn't happened in the entire history of crypto. Even the previous cycles, we're in the fourth cycle, right? Things haven't happened yet. But just because you have some guys that are not realizing the bigger picture who are elected to office and so on, doesn't mean we can't get to where we need to be. At the end of the day, we represent supply and demand, depending on like how we are into certain investments and um, the the demand, even for, I hate to say it, like mean coins, right? It still has value. You've seen that, especially last week, how many darn meme tokens you saw pump. And especially, what was it, Pepe, the one that literally says on the website is not a utility coin, has no utility whatsoever, but still has value. So that's something to be said. And as I jump into this next part, I want you guys to understand supply and demand, and especially when it comes to the whole concept of you know, various different countries, the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and other countries are joining that mix. Let's go ahead and full screen this as well. You may feel as though, well, this doesn't have to anything to do with actual specific tokens and coins. Oh, it actually does. So let's pull this up. And what you see right here is, again, from Smoke. Shout out to him. And um, actually, I didn't know he followed me. Well, I'll be darned. I'll give you a follow, Smoke. I'll even give you a shout out later. So BRICS unveils a new system that will be based on crypto. ISO 222 implementation is accelerating development of BRICS new system. And ISO recognized cryptocurrencies will achieve higher trading volumes, plus will gain widespread adoption. Don't ever forget that. If you've been following ISO for the last couple of years and you're frustrated, 
that the whole idea of this is not happening right now, don't ever lose you know sight of the finish line. We are not to that finish line yet. You know, if anything, what are, what is on sale? What isn't on sale? You know, are you into crypto just because you're wanting to see a quick pump and dump from a mean token? Or things just go parabolic because of the mainstream narrative? Or are you still on that course of, hey, guess what? I recognize that this stuff is tied into Web3. And you missed the boat. I missed the boat because I was a kid. You know, I'm being a kid playing basketball all the time or playing football or active in sports, boxing, you name it. I'm being a kid. I'm focusing on being a kid. By all means, you got kids? I don't focus being on a kid because you don't never get that time back. But at the same time, it's nice to see kids that want to learn about some of this stuff, is it not? My point is this. As a kid in the 80s and 90s, you know, especially as I would say 1995 came around, that was the first time I was exposed to what? A thing called Windows 95 and the internet. That's the first time in my life I heard about the internet. Now, some other people they knew about since maybe 92 or 93, very, very early and so on. But the key thing is, I think all of us can agree that we wanted to be able to invest in the concept of like Google and whatnot. Imagine a time in your life that you can invest into the next era of the internet. And that's, of course, where we're going to talk about like BSVs and some of these other ones. So this is the point. This is the outline. How do we bring it all together? And how do we recognize the shift to this new monetary system? The BRICS nations, are they doing that? You better believe they're doing that. So back in 2020, you had this whole thing of, you know, the pandemic. And a lot of people before that, you know, whole thing happened with the pandemic were stating like, I'm, you know, I remember at the time I wasn't into crypto, but I was thinking about it. You know, it wasn't until the year later, January 2021, I finally got into altcoins. I held BTC. I didn't hold the full one. But my main key takeaway for you guys is recognizing supply and demand. Every action has a reaction. Check out this example that we have. Full this screen this once again. Again, thank you to Mike Cornwell, who provide a lot of material that was shared here tonight. If you don't know who he is, his name is Elon Muff in the comments. All right. So ISO recognized cryptocurrencies will achieve higher trading volumes, plus will gain widespread adoption. Connections no one else will make. Right, smoke has been killing it, right? So we're going to pull this up. Um, on this one, he took it from acrobat.adobe.com. We're going to pull it up on the other screen. And I get it. Some of you guys aren't exactly you know big fans of XRP. Some of you are, some of you aren't. Just listen to what's being presented. Tie, in, tie it into your own research or you're for it or not. Have an open mind, right? So in this abstract, okay, um, I'll blow it up a little bit more bigger for you guys. What does it say? Why is this important? Well, look what is mentioned right here specifically. M. Welling making a Ripple XRP cryptocurrency participating in the ISO payment ecosystem for international transactions. Here's an abstract about it. it says the biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it is taking place. International banks and businesses communicating in different languages must be able to send payment information to one another in a seamless uniform system. Right, ISO 222. We're not going to harp on that too much. Did all that research. If you're new, it's okay, but we'll catch you up on the highlight here. Until recently, the ISO payment system precluded cryptocurrencies from participating. The release of the digital token identifier standard transformed that allowing cryptocurrencies to be recognized as legitimate currency under the ISO system. Cryptocurrencies accepted into the ISO payment system will be will gain the ability to be utilized in international transactions between financial institutions. As a result, ISO recognized cryptocurrencies will achieve higher trading volumes, a historical problem preventing cryptocurrencies from gaining widespread acceptance. Therefore, cryptocurrencies that participate in the ISO system will emerge from the cryptocurrency bubble victorious. Wow. Like, you know, that sounds cool. For a lot of us, it's like, we already know about this. You're not preaching to the choir here, Max. And I get it. I totally get it. But if you understand the whole concept of why ISO is so important, why we've been talking about for at least a good couple years, literally this April with you guys will be two years, okay? Is recognizing that it's not what the market says at the current time being, like, oh, 
we're not seeing anything going parabolic. It's just the mean tokens and so on. Again, understand where we are, understand where the institutions are. But this whole thing that you're going to see tonight in regards to specifically what's going on with the BRICS nations is powerful. Whether we like the idea of BRICS nations or not, right? It is powerful because it recognizes that it's all about supply and demand. And it's all about what countries are doing what. And the dollar dominance, like, it's, you know, we're losing that dominance. It doesn't mean that our dollar is worth zero. But, you know, it's kind of like, and I'm not trying to make this political. Please don't interpret this way. So I'm just quoting him. But, you know, Trump mentioned that he doesn't feel as though that our dollar is going to go to zero. But if it went to like 70 cents on the dollar, that's a problem. Why is that a problem? Let's get more into some of that stuff. So let's pull up this next part of what we have. And basically speaking, um, I think this is also from Smoke. So let's pull it up. Here's the next part. And on this one, I'll just refresh the page. There you go. And let me come out of the frame. So what you see here, you know, is also from this PDF. Let's blow it up a little bit more. And it says here um, some of these key things. So actually, I'll just keep it right there because it gets too zoomed in and it's hard for me to go left and right. So it says, again, from MOLing, this is from June 2022. Okay. Uh, interesting how it says ALGA right there as an ALGA ran. It says, all these ISO recognized cryptocurrencies share one commonality. And that is, quote, a focus on streamlining international wire transfers. The use of cryptocurrency for international wire transfers will improve the interoperability of cross-border payments and reduce fees associated with international transactions. Let me see if I can pull this up a little bit more. Yeah, I can. Sorry about that. Cryptocurrencies that participate in the ISO system will gain widespread acceptance and differentiate themselves from other competitors in the increasingly crowded cryptocurrency space. There's a conclusion in regards to this. And on this one, you know, it's not highlighted. I, I did think it was nice to, you know, mention this. It says, with discussions surrounding digital currencies and CBDCs gaining momentum, the ISO had to look to cryptocurrencies to improve the interoperability across border payments. As a result, the ISO issued the digital token identifier standard, allowing cryptocurrencies to be recognized as legitimate currency under the ISO system. The use of ISO recognized cryptocurrencies is international financial transactions will help cryptocurrencies achieve widespread acceptance through increased trading volumes, a historical problem for, well, it doesn't go to the next page, but it's a historical problem in regards to what? Like what SWIFT does. I mean, I, I literally know that's what's going to mention without getting more into it. Now, here's the thing. I understand uh, this narrative, you know, um, I hold, for instance, like BSV, all right? And I understand the narrative of, and please don't shoot me over saying this, all right? It's just my opinion. We can have a difference of opinions. But I understand people stating that, you know, they feel as though BSV is, currently speaking, you know, the true commodity, true Bitcoin. I would agree with that. And they also mentioned that, for instance, when things come to light, and it could be very, very soon, for all we know, that everything else would be labeled as a security. Now, just have an open mind and hear me out before you, you're just like, the hell with Maximus, I'm out of here, right? You can do whatever you want. My interpretation and my opinion is basically that, back to the whole thing of the ISO standard. So the United States with the SEC labels certain things as securities, as we know, hence the whole thing with Ripple and some of the other ones that they went after and so on. But when it comes to ISO standards in itself, to me, that even separates the whole thing, right, from securities and so on. The SEC can still label some that are ISO as securities. But again, back to the whole thing with Ripple. Ripple has mentioned that if it was to lose the whole case, they would do what? They would move on. And you better believe they wouldn't be the only one that would move on. There's other places in the world continents, Europe, Asia, so on, that are part of what? The ISO standard. Or how about Jasmine? 
Jasmine is not official ISO standard, but same type of situation. They can move on. Why is that? Because their regulations, DFFT and so on, right? Data free flow with trust is a totally different thing. So while we want to be, and I know somebody's going to say, oh my God, you're going to say rah, rah, rah. Yeah. Why we want to be rah, 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 all this stuff or what rah, 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 one thing. My thing is just recognizing, look, I will take a chance on all of these particular ones if they have utility. Some of you guys ask what cold storage solution I use. I use this and it is the decent wallet. All right. I also, of course, have a ledger uh, like this. All right. You can get a discount basically from going into the affiliate link, which is in all the live video descriptions and recorded and so on. And for the Yahoo's or that are out there, they're like, this is just a shield. And, you know, we'll fix point this out. And it's a great point. Were you aware that you don't necessarily get a discount link just going straight to the site? No, you actually have to go through a platform like this. So how cool is that? You know, I don't think anybody's complaining about that. But anyway, use the link, get a discount. There's another one here. If you're the type of person you want to get one for your, you and your, you know, significant other, uh, you can get two of them. They have a, they actually have another promotion, which is this. And I think this is cool. You can get an all-in-one card wallet plus backup card package. Interesting. I thought that was cool. And again, one of the main key things I like about the Decent Wallet is not having to do the, the red tape of, you know, jumping through all the hoops for XDC and the custom folder. I mean, Edward Vincent can vouch on that. Some of you guys can too as well in regards to Ledger. That was a pain in the butt. You don't have that problem. You literally open up your phone it's on your app track everything that's going on right and you know same goes not your keys not your crypto you know the drill check it all out though if you wish to do so it is truly the cold storage solution that i use for the most part there's still some on ledger that you know i kind of split it up on it and so on so it is what it is but if i have preference over one i'm going with this one a lot easier to use and so on and some people even to this day still ask me which one to use. Thank you.